The third generation iPod Touch was a device you definitely could have a lot of fun with. You were able to get many different games from the Progressive App Store. You had the possibility to load old Shrek movies onto that apparatus and to watch them whenever you wanted. And you could insert a whole ass full of incredible Mandala tracks into that device, what definitely is a success because that artist indeed created a bunch of remarkably good songs. I know, with this enumeration I've probably convinced some of you guys and even myself that this was a great device, but unfortunately there was also another side we have to take a glimpse at. Back in 2009, Apple presumably kind of thought, okay, our designs are sleek and cool and yeah, what do you think about granting ourselves some more vacation and, you know, make the plans about the new device designs next year? And so the iPhone 3GS and later the 3rd gen iPod Touch were published and looked nearly the same as their predecessors. But to be honest, the design of the iPod Touch actually was very cool and sleek back then. On the other hand, I could also understand the confused people who had to distinguish their devices and above that the packaging to make sure to buy the correct one. But obviously, Apple didn't sell the same iPod with a new model number one year later. There had to be changes, and those were to find between the TFT screen and the scratch and dent addicted backside inside the iPod Touch. The processor for example was improved, what probably wasn't that hard because the second gen came with nearly the same processor as the first generation iPod Touch. It came with double the RAM, what presumably wasn't that hard because... Okay, I think you already got the point. The new hardware gave the iPod Touch 3G a speed upgrade which let iPod second gen owners despair. Above that it came with more memory for more Shrek movies and Madonna songs. Instead of 8, 16 and 32, it came in 8, 32 and 64 gigabit variant even though the last name wasn't affordable for a middle-class person without selling a kidney or participate in a medical research. Anyway, all that upgrades brought a big disadvantage. The battery time was immensely worse. And I mean, iPods weren't that famous for having a good battery time at all. However, the third generation iPod Touch was discontinued in 2011 and is stuck on iOS 5.1.1. But I downgraded mine to iOS 4.1 because of speed improvements. What brings us to the question if that apparatus is good for anything in 2020. I have to admit I'm using this device daily to listen to music while doing sports, but it's also cool to play some ancient apps on it which remind you to your days as a teenager where Temple Run was more important than everything else. The big advantages of using this device nowadays are the increased memory, its speed and definitely its price. I've afforded this 64 gig one for just 25 bucks which is 250 times more than my monthly YouTube earnings but I think for most of you should that sound like a good and affordable price. But for sure we have to keep in mind that this device can't give you support for more than music and some vintage apps. And of course you can watch Shrek movies on it. Even though copy protection became better since 2009 but I think the mobile Shrek experience would be worth the 5 bucks on the iTunes store. If you would like to compare this iPod Touch to the second generation I would really recommend this video. Thanks for watching and don't forget to leave a like. See you next time, I wish you a nice day. Adios amigos.